Hola muchachos, ¿qué tal? Buenos días. Aquí tienen el horario para hoy, jueves, el 19 de mayo. No homework was due for today, just to continue going through your study guide. Uh, the Find Someone Who review activities with the 15 key concepts from semester two. Uh, to continue working on that and make sure you have that completed by May 31st. Those are when those two assignments are due. Um, learning targets are to continue our conversation from our previous class, talking about the future, future goals and aspirations uh, for post-graduation. Your warm-up for today, indicate three things that you plan to do this weekend in the future tense. Refer to page 43 for review of the simple future. Um, and let's take a look at that. Page 43 in the textbook, so it uses the verb ir, which is the verb to go, followed by a, which means to, and then the infinitive is whatever it is you are going to do. So, for example, mis amigos y yo vamos a ir, uh, let's see, or excuse me, mi familia y yo vamos a viajar a Tennessee. My family and I are going to travel to Tennessee. So this would be the verb ir in the nosotros form, right? Vamos, nosotros, followed by a, which just means to. And then the infinitive, the thing that I'm going to do, is the verb to travel. And you don't conjugate that at all. You leave it in the infinitive. So if you're talking about what you yourself are going to do, yo voy a estudiar, trabajar, voy a nadar, voy a hacer la tarea. Or if you want to talk about what you and a friend are going to do or family, then of course you would use the nosotros form. Another example, que vas a hacer este fin de semana? That's the question. Que vas a hacer? Este fin de semana, what are you going to do this weekend? Yo voy a trabajar con mi tío en su compañía. I'm going to, uh, excuse me, I'm going to work with my uncle in his company. So three things that you intend on doing this weekend, and I do believe that that is question number eight or nine. Let's see. Question number, hmm, no. A little bit different. Question number eight is, ¿Qué vas a hacer durante las vacaciones de verano? What are you going to do after you graduate? Or excuse me, what are you going to do during summer vacation? So it's same idea, right? Same construction where you're using the simple future to respond to that. So you can actually go ahead and knock out question number eight uh, from the speaking questions. So that is your warm-up for today. We're going to spend, this is our last concept, y'all, before we really gear up for your final exam. Uh, the final concept is the grammar of the future tense. Uh, and then we'll do a quick guided video practice and exercise 14, uh, and then pivot back to preparing for your final exam. So if you look at the simple future, we have this in English, right? to say what someone is going to do. The verb to go, to, which would be a, uh, and then whatever it is you're going to do, right? The verb in the infinitive. We call this the simple future. There's another way to express future events, and that's using what's called the complex future. And that's on page 460. Uh, complex future really isn't all that complex talked about the simple future here on the right hand side. Also we could use the present tense to talk about future events. Mañana comenzamos a trabajo. Tomorrow we begin work. This is present but because we're using a time marker that's in the future uh, we identify this as referring to the future. So there are a couple ways that you guys are familiar with expressing future events but I wanted to share with you really briefly as we wrap up the academic year, um, the, the, another way to do that. So another way to talk about future events is to use the future tense. Uh, and the key phrase, as we translate it in English, is will, right? We use the helping verb will, the auxiliary modal will, with another verb 
to express future action. In Spanish, there is no will. There's not a word uh, that translates to will. That's understood in the conjugations uh, of the future. Kind of like with the imperfect, not to geek out too much, but for those of you that are really down, uh, I'm with you. When we talked about how the imperfect is to describe repeated actions in the past. In English, we use the phrase used to. So there are these phrases we use in English to connotate a certain tense. In Spanish, it's all kind of baked into the tense itself, right? Um, that's why it's so important to get become familiar with these endings so you understand the perspective that people are trying to communicate, right? Um, so it's the same idea that we looked at in the previous chapter. Um, so the good news about this new tense is it's much easier in that you have the same set of endings for AR, ER, and IR verbs. All the same regardless of the type of ending. And then, moreover, you don't need to remove the AR, ER, or IR ending. You leave the infinitive intact. So the infinitive is the stem, if that makes sense. And then you're adding to the infinitive the endings according to your perspective, your subject. So whether it's an AR verb like trabajar, or an ER verb like ser, or an IR verb like vivir, the same endings are going to be used. Trabajaré would be I will work. Yo seré would be I will be. Yo viviré would be I will live. And you're going to want to use the future probably for number nine as well. ¿Qué vas a hacer después de graduarte? You could use all three of those verbs. I will work where? Uh, I will be what? I will live where? You could use all three of these verbs to respond to that particular question number nine for the speaking. And then in terms of accent marks, notice that all forms have a written accent mark except for nosotros. So when we pronounce these, uh, we kind of cruise and then emphasize that final vowel sound. Trabajaré, seré, viviré. So go nice and slow and then just make sure to emphasize that final vowel sound. E As, a, emos, an. Almost kind of coming full circle, looking very similar to all as, a, amos, an. Maybe kind of a, a mix of everything that we've seen uh, in our year together. So we're going to watch a video, a guided video, that shows you how to form uh, the future tense. Really brief, we'll do the... guided practice here how to conjugate these verbs again super simple doesn't matter if it's an AR ER or IR verb you're going to use the same endings e as a emos an and then just add that ending to the infinitive the ending matching your perspective So we'll take a look at that video together. Uh, we'll do exercise 14. Let's see, on page 461. Oh, really, really great practice. Uh, read the article from the newspaper and write what these people are going to do in their future professions. Uh, so you're conjugating the verbs provided in the blanks there. Uh, conjugate the verb according to the subject. For example, las compañías del futuro entenderán. Since we're talking about the companies, we would use the ellos form. Entenderán que la planificación y la conservación de nuestro planeta serán esenciales. We're talking about the planning and conservation of our planet will be essential. 
these two things will be essential. Uh, it's a plural subject again, so that's why we're using the on ending. Do your best with it. The idea is to demonstrate, you know, regardless of the type of verb, uh, you're using the same endings in the future. So for the rest of class, you guys are going to be working on two things. You're going to be making sure to fill in uh, your responses to these speaking questions. And I will create another video that you can watch that will be attached to the study guide. Uh, if you're not quite sure you know, how to go about your responses, how many adjectives, how many verbs does he need or he want us to use. The magic number is three uh, for the most part. But watch that video. I'll embed that video in Canvas where you guys can find the uh, study guide for the final exam. So you guys are answering those questions, although many of them you should be familiar with as we've, we've done them for uh, project questions or warm-up questions. So that's priority number one. And then the second priority, you guys can pivot back to um, that review activity that I gave you guys last class. And now you can talk about the future for example, numbers 13, 14, really at this point you should be able to knock out all the boxes, all the squares. Um, so you can spend the rest of class working on that as well. That assignment is due on the 31st. Um, the, the 15 squared, this activity, is due on the 31st of May. So make sure to have that done in preparation for your final, y'all.